Delano de Souza there. Papers time. Now, guess what the French papers are talking about? Yes, of course, Elizabeth Bourne's resignation slash outing. It's dominating the French media. Dipti's uh, been taking a look through it all for us. That's right, Stuart. Elizabeth Bourne's resignation slash ousting, yes, because uh, the French constitution actually doesn't allow the president to explicitly fire his uh, or her uh, prime minister. Uh, so the prime minister has to resign instead. For That's why Elizabeth Bourne on Monday announced her resignation, but it was a forced one, albeit after days of su suspense, it's borne out. That's what Liberation, the left-wing paper, says on its front page, reminding us also uh, that she was really loyal to Emmanuel Macron until the end. She took the heat for enforcing the 49-3 uh, article, the constitutional article that essentially allowed Emmanuel Macron's government to forced through his very unpopular reforms uh, through the lower and upper house of parliament. Uh, those reforms also smearing his, her reputation as a politician from the left. In the end, she served as ammunition to save Emmanuel Macron. Uh, for La Croix, the Catholic paper, logically the, the, her replacement should be someone uh, that uh, is chosen in consultation with the majority uh, of the lower house. And in, by this logic, it would mean it'd be someone from the right but in reality, it's most likely Emmanuel Macron will pick someone himself. Um, uh, and uh, the paper really seeing uh, Emmanuel Macron as more and more isolated against French voters, who, of course, will be heading to the polls this year in those crucial European elections. Let's turn our attention to the British dailies today. They're talking about the Horizon scandal. Now, if you haven't heard about this, this is uh, hundreds of British postal workers that were wrongly prosecuted for fraud. Well, this is considered one of the most widest or biggest um, uh, miscarriages of justice in British history. Between 1999 and 2015, more than 700 UK postal workers, they're called postmasters or postmistresses, were wrongly uh, prosecuted and in some cases found guilty and even sent to prison for fraud and theft. It was in fact due to glitches in the UK post office's uh, software uh, called uh, Horizon, that software is developed by a Japanese firm. Uh, workers in some cases had reported bugs in which, in, in some cases where large amounts of money went missing. In other cases, other workers even plugged the financial holes with their own money. Um, uh, and many uh, ultimately suffered ill health, financial ruin, uh, bankruptcy, marriage break breakdowns as a result, in, in a few cases even suicide. Uh, the government has said measures are being taken now to clear their names and to overturn uh, the criminal records of those workers who went to prison and also pay compensation. The case has really stoked major um, uh, uh, public anger. It came back to the, the spotlight last week after a documentary um, was aired in uh, which it, it, uh, a series which, uh, which traced the history of these postal workers. It sparked a petition since then uh, calling on um, Paula Venels, who was a former post office boss, to be stripped of her um, uh, of the honor that she received from Queen Elizabeth. That petition receiving over one million signatures. So you get an understanding of how angry the public are over this. The I noting. Uh, that the post office scandal firm, that Japanese firm called Fu Fujitsu, continue to work for the uh, British government. They've just been awarded a new contract in the flood alert system, despite understandably overwhelming concerns about just how efficient they will be, given what happened with the postal service uh, scandal. Something completely different for you now. This is um, a spat that has emerged between India and the Maldives. It's over Narendra Modi's recent choice of holiday destination. Yeah, and if you want a, a very good summary of what this uh, spat is about, a Quartz has a very good article. Basically, uh, it evokes this diplomatic rift between India and the Maldives. It happened, it came about after Narendra Modi, the Indian Prime Minister, visited Lakshadweep. That's an uh, archipelago of several islands belonging to India, not far from the Maldi Maldives. His uh, visit was touted as a cheaper Indian alternative to the Maldives. Uh, prominent Bollywood actors and, and cricket players also uh, sort of jumped on the bandwagon promoting this Indian holiday destination, much to, as you can imagine, the displeasure of Maldivian officials. Uh, Indians actually make up the biggest group of tourists to Maldives, which um, depends on tourism for, its, uh, for the well-being of its economy. 
So uh, Maldivian ministers then mocked uh, Modi's trip, making anti-India comments about uncleanliness, about smelly rooms and open defecation. Uh, this is from the Maldivian paper, The Sun-Times, which reports that those ministers, those Maldivian ministers in question, have now been suspended. India, for its part, has summoned the Maldivian envoy to the External Affairs Ministry to express its strong concerns. The two countries have really fallen out. And just to get back to that Quartz article, it's very interesting because they say that um, uh, at, at the bottom of this could be um, a closer ties between the Maldives and China. Um, indeed, the new Maldivian leader who was elected last November had uh, vowed to get rid of the India first policy that the country had. Uh, his first diplomatic visit to China begins this Tuesday. Let's do it. Just look beautiful, doesn't it? Uh, finally, from Deep Sea, a new report in the Journal of Marine Sciences has found that a, a silky shark managed to actually regrow a chunk that was taken out of its dorsal fin. Yeah, it's quite fascinating. This is the picture afterwards. <laughs> this is the picture before. Ow. <laughs> uh, and it's a very sad story. These silky sharks are found off most of uh, the, uh, coastal waters. They're particular, particularly vulnerable to overfishing. So some of them had been tracked with these trackers by scientists. Uh, and one was spotted off the coast of Florida, visibly with the tracker ripped out of the dorsal fin. We don't know why, rather crudely as well. Uh, nearly a year later, though, uh, divers spotted that same shark uh, here with the wow. fin almost uh, entirely regenerated. Uh, they basically figured out that this, the, the shark was able to use its own scar tissue and regenerated tissue to build that fin back together. It's obviously also urging people not to rip out trackers in sharks because it's crucial to monitoring their movements and protecting their species. Yeah, very impressive. Very impressive. Not even any photoshopping done there, right? Nope. Very <laughs> impressive. Dip tea with the papers on France 24. Thanks.